Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Zippy here and I am back at it again to drop yet another What If movie. This being either What If Deku Was a Secret Experiment or What If Deku Was Experimented On. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I still haven't chosen the name, seeing as I just got home and I decided I might as well do a completely unscripted what if. Now, I got home and I was thinking of this idea while I was on the bus, so I guess I kind of scripted it in my mind. However, this is just completely off the top of my head. So, with that being said, you guys know the drill. Check out the links in the description, seeing as I have my merch store on there, as well as my Discord server, and my thumbnail maker, and the group channel, The Akatsuki. It's going to be coming back, boys, and I know we haven't uploaded in a minute, however boys we will be resurrecting the channel with that being said though guys if you are excited for the video make sure you guys leave a comment down below and if you end up liking the video and like my content at the end of everything make sure you hit that subscribe button with that being said let's get started Okay, so we're going to be starting this story on the day of the sludge villain. Now, in this version of events, Deku's life will actually have been very, very similar to the one in canon. Deku's bring up is going to be exactly the same as everything that happened in canon. However, one decision is going to be altering the entirety of the My Hero Academia story. And this is where we're going to be starting the tale of what if Deku was experimented on. So... We start a story with Deku walking into class. Of course, just like in canon, he's basically going to be sitting back in the class. The teacher will, of course, be walking in and be like, hello, everybody. I would normally give you guys career aptitude tests, but I know that all of you guys want to be heroes, correct? Immediately, the entire class will just be like, yeah, we want to become heroes. And he would throw the papers in the air. Bakugo will, of course, end up standing on the desk and saying, don't compare me to these losers, teach. I'm going to be bigger and badder than any of them have even have a chance to be they're gonna be lucky if they even end up being some busted d-listers as the teacher would be like now now bakugo calm down bakugo would immediately get a bunch of ramification from the other students as they would be like come on bakugo don't say that bakugo would immediately just look at them and say come on guys i'll take you all on as it's at this point that the teacher would look at the list of where people want to go in for their high school careers immediately he would notice that deku wants to enlist for ua and he would of course point this out seeing as you know this is pretty surprising Surprising to him and you know seeing this he immediately points it out just like in canon Deku will immediately just get called out by Bakugo he's going to throw the explosion on his desk and Deku was just going to be like uh Bakugo sorry it's not what it looks like Bakugo would just be like yeah what do you mean it's not what it looked like nerd you want to get into the national school well I got bad news for you. A quirkless kid like you will never have a chance at UA. Immediately, Deku would say, uh, they got a, a, a rid from that rule. You don't have to have a quirk anymore. I can join general. And immediately, Bakugo would shoot an explosion at Deku, just like in canon. Immediately, the teacher would tell Bakugo to calm down. And it's at this point that Bakugo would go back to sit down on his seat. It's at this point that I'm now basically going to be fast forwarding to the end of class. Now, this is of course going to be their final period of the day, AKA their final class. And this is when Deku would basically start packing his stuff just like in canon. He would of course grab his notebook as he's going to put it in his backpack. However, before he can, Bakugo would stand right in front of him and she's just like, what's this nerd? Immediately Deku would say, uh, nothing Bakugo. As Bakugo would just be like, huh, as he would explode it on sight. Deku would look at him and he's like, ah, you know, he does that little normal screen from canon. And Baku would just be like, huh, what are you doing writing notes down, you nerd? You know this isn't going to help you in the real world, right? As Baku would immediately just kind of chuckle in Deku's face. Deku would say, yeah, as basically this entire scenario is going to go like what you guys saw in canon. Bakugo is then going to press Deku a little bit, and this is when Deku would give him that angry stare as Bakugo would turn towards him and shoot an explosion off his palm. He would immediately say, got something to say, nerd, as Deku would say, no, 
everybody would walk away as they're like pathetic. Bakugo would throw the paper outside the the throw the notebook outside of the window, and this is when he would basically stop and tell Izuku that if he know that he knows if he really wants to be a hero so badly, he might as well just jump off from the roof and hope he gets reincarnated in his next life with a quirk. Deku would stare at Bakugo with an angry expression, and it's at this point that Deku would just realize that there's nothing he could do about it. Deku would look down at the ground as he just starts having one thought go through his head. Should I do it? Should I jump? I mean, I have no quirk. What if Bakugo's right? What if I can't get into UA? What if quirkless people like me are truly useless in this world? I mean, what am I going to amount to? Normal desk job? I'll probably be stuck with the same life as my dad, never being able to see my family. Is that really the life I want? That would just simply continue to go through Deku's head until at one point, Deku would open his eyes and before he knows it, he was actually at the top of the roof. This is when everybody would have been gone from the school premises and Bakugo and his friends would have been long gone from the situation. Bakugo would have been far away from the tunnel so the sledge phone would have ended up keep continuing to run from All Might. However, in this version, I'm going to be saying that All Might would end up, of course, catching the Sludge Villain. Sludge Villain, seeing as he doesn't have no kid to get, jump onto, he wouldn't end up doing what he did in canon, and All Might would, of course, inevitably end up catching the Sludge Villain. With that being said, this is when we're going to cut over to Deku. Deku would look down at the ground as he's just thinking to himself, should he do it? This is when Deku would honestly start regretting it and he would start trying to get down. However, his foot would slip and this is when Deku would fall down and start plummeting. Immediately, thoughts would start rushing through Deku's head as Deku would just say, I guess this is it. That's the last thing Deku would remember until Deku would suddenly open his eyes. This is when he would be surrounded by a strange man in a bunch of containers with liquid. He would see a man with a gray mustache and green glasses and golden rims around them. As Deku would immediately say, you know, he would try to say something under the water, but seeing as he is underwater, his, you know, the things that he's saying is muttered. Immediately, Dr. Ujiko would rush towards Deku and basically go to scan Deku's, um, Deku's makeup, genetic makeup. He would immediately start scanning the part of Deku's brain, which basically sends him receptors and this one he would realize one crucial mistake he forgot to cause to make Deku brain dead he basically forgot to make it so that Deku has to listen to every single one of his commands immediately Deku would proceed to bust out of there as he would say where am I immediately Dr. Ujiko would rush towards his computer as he would start trying to send an SOS signal to all for one however before he even gets the chance Deku would rush at Dr. Ujiko and say who am I? What's my name? Immediately, Dr. Ujiko would smile as he would start sweating profusely and say, Your name is Izuku Midoriya. Immediately, the doctor would look at Deku as he smiles and says, There must be hope after all. This is when Deku would go to a mirror and see what he looks like. He basically looks like the Egyptian version of a Nomu. If you guys have ever, you know, you guys know the normal Nomu. He basically looks like the Egyptian version of that, where his head shape is kind of like that weird Egyptian statue. And he has like a golden crown on him. You know, he has like red little, I I'm going to try to put a picture up on screen if I remember, of course, because most of the time I always end up forgetting what I'm going to be doing with the what if and if I got to put a picture in and you guys know the drill. I, most of the time I'd be forgetting, but this time I'm going to try to actually do it. That being said, though, this is when, of course, Deku is basically going to have a realization of everything that just happened. He would get a brief flashback of when he jo jumped off the roof, but that's it. There's nothing else. It's just him jumping off the roof, and after that, it's all blank. There's, there's nothing. This is when Deku would basically just sit down as he just starts thinking about things. And Dr. Ujiko would ask Deku one simple question. Do you remember your life, boy? Deku would look at Dr. Ujiko as he would say, I don't remember a thing. All I remember is jumping off a roof. But I don't even remember what I look like. Dr. Ujiko would smile as he would say, good. As immediately, he would tell him to use his shape-shifting quirk to try to take on the features of a regular human. Deku would try just that, and this is when he would transform into a version that looks similar to Deku. However, he has black hair, brown eyes, his hair is less nappy, it's on the shorter side, and Deku has more of a built physique. He has a shapeshifter quirk, after all, and if he can give himself a buff physique, he's gonna do it. 
That being said, immediately Dr. Ujiko would basically start sending a signal to All For One and of course, as he did earlier, All For One would immediately use his quirk to teleport straight over there. This is when he would see the boy standing before him as All For One would say, Who is this child? Why did you send me the SOS signal? As immediately Dr. Ujiko would smirk as he would say, This is my latest experiment. This boy is going to be revolutionary. And Deku would be sitting pretty far away from them, so he wouldn't be able to hear a thing. But Dr. Ujiko and All For One would discuss. And by the end of the conversation, All For One would have a creepy smile go down his face. As he would immediately walk over to Deku and say, So, you managed to make a vessel which can hold an infinite amount of quirks? And Dr. Ujiko would look at him as he would say, I did. As immediately, All For One would smile and say, Perfect. He would walk over to Deku as he would put his hand on his head and he would say, this won't hurt a bit. Immediately, a bread light would just start emanating from All For One's hand as Deku would fall straight to his knees and start screaming in agony. He would say, ah, as All For One would start blasting quirks straight into Deku's body. Immediately, Deku would start getting so many quirks that his body is simply overwhelmed and All For One would smile as he would say, the perfect vessel you've done it you've created the perfect vessel for me i don't know how to thank you dr ujiko would look at all for one as he would say well you can give me all the resources i need as all for one would smile and say yeah i could do that or as he would aim his hand at the doctor and shoot tendrils straight through the doctor's head and heart, immediately it would penetrate straight through and the doctor would fall straight onto his knees. As Offer One would walk over to Deku who had just missed all of that and he would then say, How do you say I saved you from this? That man ran experiments on you and I gave you the key to get out of there. I give you the key to get powerful and strong. As immediately Deku would get a brief flashback of his life and how he always wanted to be a hero. Deku would ask All For One if heroism is a thing in this world and All For One would say yeah, but who would want to be a hero when you could be the villain of the story? All For One would chuckle as Deku would say, you're kind of right. All For One would have also implanted a suggestive quirk within Deku which basically works in the reverse of what you're expecting. I'm sure many of you guys are thinking that what I mean by uh, a suggestive quirk is similar to Koto Matsukami where the user does things where where you know it's not their physical will however they think it's their will that's basically what Deku got hit with by all for one he used that quirk on Deku and uh, yeah Deku was definitely doing a lot of things that wouldn't be in his character now this is when Deku would take all for one's hand and immediately they would teleport back over to the League of Villains as Deku would stand right before Shigaraki all for one would immediately say, Shigaraki, you have a brother. As Shigaraki's eyes would widen upon the mention of a brother, he would immediately say, brother, as he would turn around and be hoping to see his younger brother that he actually ended up putting on a t-shirt when he was around the age of, let's say, five years old, no, four years old, because his quirk activated when he was relatively young. That being said, this is when Shigaraki would immediately start realizing everything and just say, oh, it's you. As immediately, Deku would just assume position, you know, he stands in front of Shigaraki, and they both just kind of greet each other awkwardly. As Shigaraki would walk past Deku and shoulder bump him, telling him that no matter what he does, he'll always be all for one's favorite. As Deku would look towards Shigaraki's direction, he would say, yeah, sure, keep telling yourself that, man. Shigaraki would get a brief, uh, brief like angry look in his face and Deku would chuckle as it's at this point that Deku would basically go over to his quarters and pass out. The entire night Deku would have strange dreams about a boy with green hair that he doesn't seem to recognize all that much. However, for some reason, he seems as if he's so familiar with the boy. And this is when Deku would just wake up in a cold sweat as it's the very next morning and Deku just kind of doesn't know what to do. Deku would go out into their normal League of Villains bar and this is when All For One would be standing right before him as he would open a portal in front of them with Kurogiri be besides him. He would basically tell Deku that today is going to be the day he puts him to the test 
immediately Deku would arrive before Gigantomachia. In case many of you guys don't know who Gigantomachia is, I'm pretty sure you should, seeing as it was probably already adapted into the anime already. It's that giant behemoth that All For One has as a little bit of a pet, I guess you could say. That being said, All For One will teleport Deku right before him and tell him that his task is going to be to defeat that huge monster before him. Immediately, Deku would just start panicking as he's like, there's no way I could do that. Look at the size of that thing. Offron would smile and say, you can do anything you put your mind to. As Deku would, after hearing those words, just remember something that his mother used to tell him. A woman with green hair would flash right before him as he would hear those same words. And Deku would immediately look towards Gigantomaki as he would say, I guess I'll do that. He would immediately rush at Gigantomachia as he would begin to essentially shoot black tendrils at it. Similar to Black Whip, he would pull Gigantomachia onto the ground as immediately Deku would create a giant hammer from his arm made out of complete sand as he would smash it into one of Gigantomachia's calves. Immediately Gigantomachia would scream out in pain as it would rush towards Deku's direction and swat the air. Deku would jump away as he would begin to fly in the air and he would immediately use a quirk which, amounts him, which allows him to gigantify himself. They would both now be at equal size and Deku at this point would basically start using quirks as if they came natural to him. Deku would begin to use these abilities as if it was a Z easy as breathing and Deku would just start going haywire on this Gigantomachia thing. Now that they're both the same size and Deku has strength enhancers, Gigantomachia and Deku would go at it for hours and hours on end. Just imagine what it would be like if two Ozarus were to fight each other on planet earth. That's basically what would happen except divided by 10 because you know they're not that strong quite yet. Deku and Gigantomachia would go insane and the battle would actually end up causing a sort of a mini earthquake right? It would cause a mini earthquake in the earth which leads to a bunch of people realizing so often one would have to teleport them to a different location. That being said, this is when Deku and Gigantomachia would both arrive at another location and continue the battle. Oh my god, this uh, this little yawn, bro. I'm telling you, that that it always sneaks up on me out of nowhere. Like, I'll just be chilling, and then out of nowhere, I'll need a yawn. Like, like it, it's so weird. But you guys are not here to hear about how I yawn all the time. You're here for the what if. So, I'm here to, of course, deliver. That being said, this is when Deku would basically proceed to... <clears throat> essentially defeat Gigantomachia after about five minutes of the battle raging on and offer him with smile as he was viewing the entire battle from Kurogiri's perspective. Offer him with chuckle as he would say, ah, oh, much appreciated. The boy is ready. As for the next month or so, Deku would continue and just basically start training as it's at this point that Deku would now perfectly have perfect usage of all of the quirks that he now has access to. In case you're wondering how strong Deku is, Deku's as strong as manga Shigaraki with the exception of Decay. Deku wouldn't have access to Decay which is kind of a little bit of a drawback seeing as DK in the manga is so utterly broken. Like, if you guys have not read the manga, you would not understand the just how broken Shigaraki's quirk is. And for those of you who have read the manga, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. That being said, this is when Deku would basically proceed to continue training for the next nine months, seeing as now they have a nine month time skip until the day of the entrance exam. And after that, they're now going to have another one month time skip, seeing as we're basically going to be skipping to the day of the USJ. All the events in My Hero would essentially go the same, seeing as Deku, you know, got experimented on, yada, 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 10 months happened, you know, Dr. Rujiko died, and all, yeah, all that stuff happens, right? Now, Bakugo would still end up making it into UA. However, one change to the story is going to be that Bakugo, in this version, for some reason, he changed. See, after Deku's, uh, after Deku's successful, in their eyes, um, attempt to put himself on a t-shirt, Bakugo changed his views. He decided that he was never going to bully another kid again because it may have been that thing that he said that pushed Deku. <sighs> over the limits i mean it it definitely was because you know bakugo quite literally told the man to jump off a building which he did and uh 
yeah pretty tragic stuff but bakugo doesn't have the time to be thinking about that stuff that being said deku would basically continue to train and this is when many of the um what's it called people who are recruited by the time of the usj would all be recruited the ua trader will of course be announced and in this version i'm going to be saying that it's kaminari denki kaminari now i don't know if you guys have seen this theory or even heard about it quite yet but there's a theory going around that i actually really like the theory of that kaminari is basically the ua trader now the reason that that is a theory at all is because of the fact that he has a jam he has the potential to use his quirk of electricity as a jamming signal as well as to shoot signals out to the villains aka all for one or just normal shigaraki and stuff like that <sighs> <sighs> these yawns keep doing me dirty oh my god this is not okay anyways as i was saying deku is definitely getting ready for the usj at this point and this is when i come back after my slumber extra pumped yes sir boys after i recorded the last 20 minutes of the video i was too tired like i was physically too tired to continue for the past couple of days i've been going off a lot of sleep i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's not as if i only get three hours of sleep but your boy be working now he be hooping he be going to school he be making videos i'll be busy as heck so it's pretty hard for me to have a lot of energy at times and right now my room was dark i had no sunlight in here so i passed out quite literally as i was recording the video i literally just jumped on the bed and it, between like 10 seconds i passed out so now i'm back though to finally finish off the job that i started so as i said the usj had basically just begun and this is when i will now be jumping over to deku all for one and shigaraki discussing the plan now shigaraki would be the one to come up with the plan of simply destroying all might with the nomu however when shigaraki is doing this deku would proceed to just laugh in his face as shigaraki would say what deku would look at him as he would say don't make me laugh that thing is supposed to beat all might deku would immediately look at the nomu as he would stand before it the nomu towering over him deku would immediately proceed to pull a mikey as he would kick the nomu's head so hard the nomu's head quite literally explodes causing the brain to explode meaning the nomu has no receptors to attach itself to his conscious and its body so it would quite literally just die this is when shigaraki would open his eyes wide as he would fall back to the ground and say you you've been hiding this power from me haven't you all for one what is the meaning of this immediately all for one would smile as he would look towards deku and say looks like you're no longer needed if this scares you then i couldn't even imagine what all might would do to you he would immediately walk over to shigaraki as he would say you know for a minute i truly believe you to be my successor but I guess, I guess I found another fit. This is when he would put his hand on Shigaraki's face as he would forcibly retract DK from him. The very quirk that he gave to Shigaraki on the day that he was, I believe it was five years old because he ended up being a late bloomer. Yeah, he was a late bloomer. This is when Shigaraki's body would fall to the ground without any quirk, powerless to do a thing in the world to stop All For One or Deku from what they are about to do. And this is when All For One would look towards Deku's direction as he would say, are you ready? And this is when Deku would look towards All For One as he would say, I am. He would look towards All For One as right as he basically says that, a memory would flash back in his head of the time where he fanboyed over all might he would see a boy the same boy he keeps seeing with the green hair playing saying and someday i'm gonna be like all might too as that just makes deku feel uneasy all for one would notice this and deku would just say it's nothing as they would end up getting everybody suited up and deku would end up making a plan that essentially ha has them all go to the normal sections and they're all going to be tasked to take down the heroes not kill them but take them down they can all be turned to their side with the right convincing as the villains would begrudgingly accept but deku would make a make a point out of one of them and he would essentially show them all what happens if you were to question him this is when deku would basically proceed to smile as he would then 
proceeds to pretty much just continue going through what he was doing and you know nothing would really change to be honest the plan would go smoothly everybody would arrive with the exception of Deku seeing as the man is technically quote unquote dead and they would basically arrive to the USJ just like you guys would all expect 13 would give her speech they would have all ended up talking on the bus who the strongest is and instead of Deku getting into class 1a instead it would be Monoma because the man Loki deserves it I mean the man's been trying hard you know Monoma do be going crazy so I'm just gonna say that Monoma ends up getting into UA and as for who got the quirk of all for one I mean of one for all I'm going to be saying that it was who's the most heroic person in the class of UA let's see I'm gonna say that instead of you who you guys probably think ends up getting one for all I'm gonna say that Nedra ends up getting one for all now a lot of you guys are probably gonna be like why and uh honestly I have no idea I honestly didn't really think about it too much. I just said Nedre, and that's what I'm going to stick with because this is fully unscripted. Come on now, don't play with me. And with that being said, though, this is when the USJ events would start. As soon as 13 basically finishes off her speech, this is when everybody would kind of look towards her direction as immediately Shigaraki teleports in front of them as he proceeds to do his normal canon event thing, which is teleporting everybody away. Bakugo and Kirishima would go to the same area and Deku would be replaced by Monoma in the ship area as he would actually end up copying, let's see, um, he would end up copying Mineta's quirk and they would create a, a, a bridge. Man, no, no, that one doesn't work because Mineta would be the only one who'd be able to go out. Monoma would jump down into the water and touch everybody as he would start taking quirks. And that's what leads Monoma to defeating them alongside with Suyu and Mineta, who just throws balls like crazy. And I'm not going to lie, he gets a little bit of friendly fire, but it's on Suyu and nobody cares about her. So it's like, I see it as a complete win-win. You know, I, I see it as a complete win. Victory. He trapped another villain. Suyu is a villain. No, I'm totally kidding, but seriously though. Yeah, that's basically what happens, and as for everything else, everything basically stays as it does in canon. That being said, this is when Deku is basically just standing around as he lets out a, a psychotic laugh. And this is when he would say, Where is All Might? As he would quite literally take down all of the villains that were fighting Aizawa. And Aizawa would not say a word to Deku. He would say he's not here. And that's the only response Deku would get from Aizawa. This is when Deku would look at him and turn his head to the side. As he's like, do you think I'm some sort of joke, Aizawa? Do you think that I'm some sort of joke? As he would push his head right onto the ground. This is when Deku would start stomping him right on his chest. As he would break ribs and it would start to get very hard for dip for Aizawa to breathe. Aizawa would start coughing out blood. And this is when Deku would stop stomping him as he would breathe in. And then say, listen to me. You have one chance. Where is All Might? Immediately Aizawa would say, he's at the school as Deku would smile and he would quite literally jump off so fast that he would arrive at UA in a matter of minutes during that time however the villains would have been taking down every single other remaining hero and hero student it took Kurogiri and the Nomu actually no the Nomu down for so it took Kurogiri and a bunch of the more powerful villains to actually end up taking down all the students including Bakugo and stuff and since Kurogiri th took down 13 a hero which is probably the most OP in My Hero Academia if you really think about it then I see no reason as to why he shouldn't be able to take down Bakugo who's really not even all that so yeah that's basically what we're going to be sticking with as for what's going what has to happen with this little event that being said though boys this is when Deku would arrive right before All Might as he would see All Might in a pitiful state and say All Might All Might All Might All Might you know all for one told me you were weak but I would have never imagined you were this weak this is when a random memory of All Might and how he fanboyed over him would snap into Deku's head as he would say, Why do I keep seeing this? He would fall down to his knees as he would say, Why? I'm so tired. Was that me? As All Might would look towards Deku and put his hand on his shoulder, 
he would have realized that he needs to take this menace down before he can help him as he would grow into his big all might form and it's at this point that deku would look towards all might as he would see that he's getting on the offensive deku would stand up as he would say no time to think about that i guess as he would get up and just power up as he would go ah and immediately all might would just feel the surge of power that's going on as deku would start blasting off with an angry aura deku would then begin to basically basically rush at All Might as All Might would say, such power. This is when Deku would look towards All Might's direction as he would say, yeah, it is quite a lot of power, I guess. This is when All Might would get punched straight through five buildings by Deku as Deku would look at him and chuckle and say, <laughs> you know, we'd let off a menacing laughter. And it's at this point that Deku would look straight at All Might as he would say, so All Might, how do you want to die? However, right as he says that, he would get a little flash in his head about one time where it was on the news that All Might might lose and he might have died against a battle. Because in this version of events, I'm going to be saying that All Might's battle with All For One, the first one, was actually broadcasted in this version of events. And Deku would get a memory where his mother comes in and goes, Izuku, dinner's ready. And this is when Deku would quite literally stop All Might as he's about to throw a United States of Smash at Deku. Deku would l basically weave the punch, grab him and say, I'm so sorry. He would go and hug All Might and All Might would just stand there confused as one of his arms is limp. Just like when he basically goes into a small might form and Deku would look at him as tears would start drooling out of his eyes. Deku would tell him that he's so sorry. He lost his memories he doesn't know what was going on for the past amount of time and this is when essentially uh all might would just stand there as deku would start crying into him and he would do a normal deku cry immediately deku would shape shift back into his normal form and this is when all might would say you're the boy the one that jumped off right deku would look at him and say what as all might would say you don't remember Deku would look at him as he would say, I, I don't, as it's at this point that Deku would basically look at All Might as he would proceed to look at him and say, help me. All Might would look towards Deku's direction as he could see the look in Deku's eyes of sheer, just, just complete, just sorry. Like the kid looks so sorry. All Might would wrap his arm around Deku and say, there's still time as he would say we need to get to the usj he would try to buff up but he would notice that he can't and he would look towards deku's direction as he would say i know this is much to ask of you but put that power to good use save those students deku would look at all might as he would say i will he would jump right back over there as in three minutes flat he would arrive back to the usj and as soon as he gets there he would see kurogiri as he would quite literally press the man so hard kurogiri's metal portion just completely gets obliterated obliterated kurogiri's metal portion is destroyed leaving kurogiri destroyed essentially and deku when he finally phases back into his izuku midoriya form and bakugo sees deku doing all these things bakugo would yell izuku as deku would look towards bakugo's direction he would then say i'm sorry as it's at this point that Deku would look at him and say, you're going to have all the time in the world to apologize for what you did later on. Now, help me. Bakugo would blast an explosion at the villain that's holding him through sheer will alone. As he would say, come on Deku. As they would rush at villains and they would proceed to start taking them down left and right. Deku and Bakugo would have flawless teamwork. As it's at this point that they would clear out the entire USJ in a matter of minutes. The rest of the pro heroes would arrive right as they had taken down the last villain. And it's at this point that the USJ cleanup would go very, very smoothly. Luckily, none of the students were killed. Some of them were injured. And because some of them were injured, a little bit worse than they were in canon, the media would actually end up making a bigger deal out of the situation than it was in canon. Leading to a two-week suspension from school. And during this time, Deku would be in a private trial. Which best basically is going to testify whether Deku should or shouldn't be allowed to become a pro hero or even forgiven for the things that he's done. I mean, people can make a point of the fact that Deku technically didn't do that. 
alone also i, I kind of paused the video a little bit because the ice cream truck went by and uh you know you know how that goes i don't know if i can get copyrighted for that song so it's like i'm just gonna pause the video instead and in case you heard it coming down anyways it's not like he had a choice he didn't do those actions all might would plead for them to forgive deku but deku would ultimately be said that he was responsible for his own actions memory loss or not deku deserves what he got he is responsible for the uh, the actions of the usj and that's what we're gonna label it as as it's at this point that all might would basically shove his fist down and say that i will retire if you don't let this boy go free i will retire and the hero society will plummet down to its lowest as immediately the judges would pause for a second and say We'll just have more heroes take your place. We'll force heroes to work even harder. All Might would say, and I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen. As it's at this point that All Might would now start his personal mission of freeing Izuku from the grasps of the government. Because he knows fully well what they are planning to do with him. As soon as All Might leaves, his fears would basically be confirmed. Immediately, Deku would be taken out of his cell by one random man wearing a suit and a key and a, and and what's it called? A keyboard? No, 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 not a keyboard, but like a um, what is it called? Those things that clipboard? Yeah, clipboard, paper, and a pen, right? He'd basically go into Deku's cell, and this is when he would begin to ask him a couple of questions. He would basically start to ask Deku whether he would or would not like his freedom. And Deku, of course, wanting to definitely be free, he would be like, I want my freedom. As immediately the man would just say, good, good, well then, does that mean you're willing to do anything for your freedom? Deku would say that he is, as it's at this point that he would smile and say, perfect, well... Hear me out. I'm the founder of a project which essentially enlists broken heroes to take on the dirty jobs. See, people like you shouldn't deserve to stay in the limelight or be recognized as pros, be idolized, be looked at by children. You deserve to do the dirty work behind the scenes. And in case you didn't know that's how hero society works, well, you do now. He would push his glasses back up as he would look towards Deku's direction and say, so... What do you say? Deku would look at the man as he would say, If it's the only chance I have, then I'll do it. Anything to make up for my horrible actions. As the man would smile and say, Perfect. And it's at this point that Deku would basically proceed to get out of the cell. As for the next couple of months, they would pretty much start training Deku in situational, situ uh, situational um, training, I guess you could say, where they would ask Deku what he would do in each situation. And Deku would be forced to play out with each and every single one of them in training exercises. Deku would do this for about one month. And at this point, the entirety of the USJ and all that stuff would have basically already happened. See, the USJ would have happened uh, two weeks after that, and then, you know, Bakugo would have ended up winning due to the fact that there was nobody to contest him. Well, of course, Todoroki can, but if Bakugo was able to beat Todoroki with just his eyes and cannon, I see zero reasons as to why he shouldn't be able to do that now. So, yeah, Bakugo, Bakugo slaps the man, you know, he folds the man like a lawn chair, just like a cannon, and it's at this point that, let's see, hmm... It's at this point that now they basically are already done with their little internships as well. So at this current moment, they're basically just working on their final exams and such, right? Now, Deku at this point is now tasked to finally go on his first mission. This is going to be an assassination mission on a villain by the name of Sh H Hisash what's his overhaul okay overhaul i tried to say his real name but i'm not gonna lie to you guys i kind of forgot it so i'm just gonna say overhaul right it's a mission to basically assassinate overhaul and stop his entire operation because from what night eyes work has been telling them overhaul is planning something big <sighs> okay the yawns came back in case you're wondering this is a whole another day that i'm now recording this i'm actually recording this on the day that i'm supposed to drop it because yesterday i ended up running out of time and your boy had to go to the gym and get some games you feel the vibes and um on top of dropping this movie special in case you are wondering later i'm actually going to be doing a stream i'll probably have to be a little busy today during the day though just because oh actually no i won't even have the chance because i'll have to also record the video for tomorrow seeing as uh yeah i have to do it 
So maybe I'll do a stream. I'm not sure. But, you know, that's not the point. Point is, Deku is essentially going to carry out his mission. Deku would basically be tasked with a cool outfit. He would wear like a really undercover looking fit. And it has a lot of pockets in it. Which, you know, are going to be pretty helpful for all of Deku's tactics and stuff like that. They ended up teaching Deku hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as weapon combat. And seeing as Deku has multiple upon multiple upon multiple quirks. I don't even want to begin listening. And so you guys are basically just going to hear the quirks as I go. Seeing as all for one just kind of gave deku many quirks oh and in case you're wondering deku also has decay all for one transferred the quirk into deku's body because that is going to be his vessel or so that was supposed to be his vessel until deku was like yeah nah bro you know i, I don't think i want to be alone no more and all for one he's pretty uh man's pretty triggered he knew he probably should have put some sort of device on deku to be able to control him more willingly but i guess that's the price he has to pay now he has to personally make sure he gets deku back and gets done with the procedure but this one all for one would then finally begin to realize wait the doctor there's no way i took him i took care of him that day i should have left him alive all for one would just scream to the heavens as he would say my plans as it's at this point that all for one now has to pretty much start searching for another twisted doctor which is willing to do all the things that dr ujiko is going to do except um only problem there is there is none see there's no other doctor that has the intellect of Dr. Ujiko, the malicious intent, as well as the time and research that Dr. Ujiko put into the nomification process. So all for one is going to basically need to reanimate Ujiko's corpse in order to do this or find something. So this is when now all for one is going to begin searching for a reanimation quirk, a sort of what's it called? Um... Uh, I'm just gonna say reanimation quirk. I wanted to say that one word where you know you can bring people back and you're like a sorcerer or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Um, but yeah, you guys get the point, right? Offer one is essentially searching for that. And as time is going by, we would basically have Deku going through with the mission, right? Deku basically lands on top of the the overhaul house, and he would basically start breaking in, doing silent takedowns on each and every single one of the heroes. He would, of course, not even have to, but Deku kind of just wants to show off and test out his new, you know, his new strategy. So Deku would pretty much end up turning his invisibility quirk, and this is when Deku would proceed to walk inside. As soon as he makes it to the door, he would notice a code, and he would walk away from the for out of sight as he would immediately transform into overhaul. He would walk over to one of the to Rapto, Kappa Rapta, I don't, I don't know what his name is, but the big guy with the muscles, right? He'd go up to him and just say, all right, open the door. Immediately, the guy would notice this and he'd be like, aren't you already inside, boss? Deku would look at him as he would say, you dare question me? As he would go to touch him, but this is when he would basically open the door and say, he, he apologizes. As Deku would walk inside, Deku would make sure to lock the door, and this is when Deku would potentially proceed to essentially walk over to Overhaul as he would see what he's doing. He would witness one of his experiments on Aerie as immediately Deku is not playing any types of games. Deku is not playing right now. Deku, upon seeing this, would immediately just be like horrified. The man would just be thinking, how can somebody humanly do this to another person as overhaul would just be smiling saying my work will soon be complete airy your pain will stop you will stop feeling pain very soon as deku just couldn't hold it back anymore he would blitz at overhaul's direction and immediately snap the man's neck it was on sight there was no prepping no nothing deku blitz him and snapped his neck before overhaul had the chance to react and he would immediately make sure that he let overhaul heal airy so airy was in perfect condition at this point he would grab her and he would basically knock her out as he would tell her that she's safe now as it's at this point that deku would go through the entire overhaul house with airy and himself transformed as overhaul overhaul as he would say i'm leaving now i'm leaving the base in your capable hands as he would basically get out of there and it's at this point that you know deku ends up completing the mission he assassinated overhaul however there's one thing that they also wanted him to do they needed him to also take down the rest of the organization so as soon as deku shows them that he saves Eri, they get a little pleased however 
they would immediately slap Deku like a dog and tell him that he needs to do his missions better next time. Deku would say that, yeah, as he'd be on the ground angered by that, like, bro, the man just stopped Overhaul's entire operation without having to go to those measures. He didn't have to kill a single person other than Overhaul. That's what he was told, as they would say, come on, now read between the lines, as it's at this point that Deku would basically just be in his cell, as... Well, All Might would finally have some free time and he would end up coming in with the police station as they would end up trying to negotiate something but it would all be a failure. All Might would ask to visit Deku and through his visitation, he would end up finding out that Deku already went through with his first mission. He ended up taking out a villain by the name of Chisaki, of uh, Ray Shisaki I believe it is. I think, I think it's Ray Shisaki or something, I don't know. I forget these things boy, I forget, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god these yawns dude it's like it's like 7 a.m right now dude this is not okay but the show must go on i must finish this movie special i had all day to do it yesterday i felt lazy and i felt just so tired so it was like i probably shouldn't have set myself up for failure the way i did by saying that it's going to be a movie special but you know it's far too late for that now seeing as we're already getting to the conclusion of the story that being said, All Might would immediately report this to the media and just decide that, well, if there's no other way for Deku to basically be freed, he might as well. All Might would basically begin to tell the people of the world what this organization does, and he would give out examples such as Hawks and Lady Nagant, as well as what's it called, Deku. He would basically start saying that Deku was a gifted child born with multiple quirks, and they took advantage of that. And the media would go crazy. They'd start eating this up. So that entire operation basically gets shut down before Deku has to go on another mission. This would lead to Deku going through a little bit of a rehab sent, uh, time period. And this is when they would finally go through the forest training arc. Deku would need to take the final stuff because, well, put it simply, he's going to be going into remedial courses with all the failures and rejects because, I mean, he wasn't in school. Deku has an intelligence quirk, but he still needs to technically do the things, right? So Deku would definitely be in remedial. That being said, this is when they would essentially go to the Force training arc, and of course, they're going to take the bus just like in any other version of events. This would lead to, of course, everybody just messing around, and when they finally arrive to their destination, Mandalay would essentially throw them off of the cliff using her dirt manipulation powers. As she would proceed to throw them all off, Deku would end up landing, of course, but he would actually end up saving all of his classmates as well. And all of them would actually start looking towards Deku in a good light. Some of them would still be kind of weary of Deku, seeing as that is kind of the guy who kind of led the entire operation to take them all down. But it turns out he didn't know what he was doing. So some of them would like be like, yo, come on now. Like the man had no control. How would you feel if you were taken over and we had to defeat you? You think we would stop trusting you just because of that? And yeah. That being said, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I kind of want to fast forward straight to the day of the little um, attack on them because this is going to get so good. See, you remember how I said Overhaul was angry at the fact that Deku quite literally just left him and went to join the heroes? It came out to public news and when All For One found this out... Oh, it was game over. Instead of going to attack them because he wants to take out All Might, or because he wants to kidnap Bakugo or Tokiyami, it's now for a different meet mean. Now it's to destroy that boy which he puts so much faith in. He would send out his entire armies. That means no moves. That means muscular. He has nothing to lose. He's going to destroy these young, this young generation of heroes and All Might in one fellow swoop. And that is where essentially all the chaos is going to start dobby would light up the fire D dobby would light the forest on fire not the fire on forest but the fire on the forest and this is when immediately everybody would be able to tell what's going on at this point all of the students instead of playing hide and seek just like in the original and they were all scattered they would actually all be at the same location so deku and the remedial uh deku and the people from the remedial courses as well as the people who actually passed the finals are going to all be together as well as class 1b and all the teachers so 
this is when a bunch of Nomus would simply start flying in, and upon realizing this, Deku would blitz at the Nomus as he would take out 10 or so in an instant. Deku would blitz them so fast that he would just take off their brains before they get a chance to react, and this is when Aizawa would immediately start turning off the quirks of many of the people who are coming. See, Muscular would have been the first one to rush at Aizawa, and Aizawa would immediately use his quirk to erase him, as Muscular would go down to nothing but a sheer normal man. As Aizawa, yeah, he takes advantage of this and whoops Muscular because, I mean, why would he fight Muscular at his full potential if he could just do this to him and, you know, take care of it pretty quickly? So, that's essentially what he does, right? And, um, after this, we're basically going to have Deku pretty much taking down the Vanguard Action Squad as no moves and a bunch of smaller other heroes would rush at them. This would lead to people like Bakugo and more of the fighter types from Class 1A 1B rushing at them, as it would take about three students to take down one of these villains, and it'd be pretty pretty dope battle. See, I'm telling you guys, if this ever were to get animated, this would be so cracked. Essentially, just imagine the war arc is basically what's happening right now, except much sooner with less higher stakes, right? Now, this is when Deku would immediately just mutter under his breath, all oh, for one, as he would immediately jump out, jump out of the way, as he would look towards Bakugo before he does and tell him if he has this handled. Bakugo would look at him and smirk as he would say, Get out of here, nerd. Go take out the big guy. As immediately, Deku would look at him and nod as he would say, Right. And it's at this point that Deku would essentially proceed to rush towards All for One. As All for One would use one of his multiple quirks, a barrier quirk, as he would stop Deku before he gets to him. Deku would immediately look at him and say, Stop the chaos. You just want simple chaos for no reason. Your goals are selfish as all for one would say now why would a god feel the need to care for others as Deku would say you're not a god you're just a twisted man with a god complex as immediately Deku would say i guess i'm gonna need to humble you right all for one would say come over here and try it as immediately they would rush at each other and all for one would begin to use more quirks than he ever had before all for one definitely came prepared he knew that if he was to fight Deku like that, that probably would have been way too much of an even battle. So, before this even started, All For One ended up taking more and more quirks. He even ended up taking a couple of the Vanguard Action Squad's quirks. Because he could basically make clones of them, the quirks, and give them to himself. Because of the fact that Dr. Ujiko already made that possible. So he's just using that technology. <laughs> that being said, oh, sorry you guys had to hear that. Deku's eyes would pretty much start lighting up a bright red as he would look towards All For One's direction and say, Well, I didn't want to have to do this, but I guess I won't be able to become a hero after all. A chopper would begin to fly into the air and Deku would say, Full throttle! As immediately, Deku's entire body would go red, similar to that of the Kaioken, as he would proceed to blitz All For One so fast that the camera wouldn't even be able to pick it up unless you were to slow down the scene by like so exponentially slow it down. It would have to go frame by frame for you to see what's going on. Deku would have blitzed All For One so fast that All For One had zero chances to react. He basically does what Kilowa did to that one big guy in Hunter x Hunter, where he proceeded to rip out his heart and have it in a little baggie. Yeah, Deku would do just that to All For One. Immediately, All For One's body would drop down to the ground as Deku would say, May you rot in hell, you scum. As it's at this point that All Might would finally land and he would start helping with, the, with taking down the rest of the villains. Deku at this point after using that quirk, his nomified body would have actually started giving up on him. He's been using multiple upon multiple quirks so many times in a row that it's finally beginning to take a toll on his body. And seeing as his pain receptors are very, very low, Deku doesn't even, does, Deku kind of fails to understand the concept of pain now i guess you could say and that being said i bet you guys are now wondering what ends up happening afterwards well to put it simply the forest training arc goes a lot smoother than the canon deku was there of course to help protect a couple of extra students meaning less students got injured in this version of events seeing as all of them could gang up on the villains and the small villains and the gnomes and stuff like that and they did an actual pretty good job you know they didn't do bad but they didn't you know do half as um good as you know just wiping them all completely and wiping the floor with them that doesn't happen but they definitely do great things right that being said though guys 
this is when now Deku was pretty much broadcasted and everybody got to see what Deku did to all for one. A bunch of people in the public would be scared of Deku and for months on end Deku would not be allowed to go back into the hero school. Instead Deku would be treated as a villain and this is not until about a couple more months would go by that it would finally start calming down and people would finally start accepting Deku as a hero as Deku is finally allowed to become a pro hero and that ladies and gentlemen is where what if deku was a secret experiment is basically going to be ending i hope you guys enjoyed this series seeing as it was pretty cool you know i, I had a pretty good time making this story it just kind of it just kind of sucked that yesterday i didn't get to put like my entire heart and soul into it and i had to split my heart and soul between three days i mean two days sorry but yeah, other than that, I feel like the story was pretty good. If you like the story and you like the direction I went with, please make sure you guys go down below and you hit that like button, seeing as I would really appreciate it as well as, you know, just, you know, just do your boy a favor. And in case you like the content, you're new here, subscribe. But yeah, you guys all know the drill. It has been your boy, Zether. I love each and every single one of you guys. And I am out. Peace.